This is just a sample of the audiobook. To get the complete audiobook access the link posted in the first comment. That make clear-cut definitions difficult. Several decades ago, I was in a jeep meandering down a mountain road when I hit a roadblock. Traffic was being held up while a new bridge was being dedicated in a traditional ceremony. Puzzled, I asked those presiding over the ceremony whether the local party had given permission for the dedication. Baffled looks greeted me until one observer explained that the person in the elaborate robes was the party secretary. It was incumbent on him, as the most important figure in the village, to dedicate the new bridge that would provide a crucial link to the outside world, and, the villagers hoped, bring new wealth to the locality. Such events, which occur every day throughout China, cause us to reflect on the relationship between the party and society, and between tradition and modernity. Did the party secretary believe that the elaborate dedication would encourage the spirits to ensure that wealth would flow into the village? Did he feel compelled to perform the celebration, to retain or build credibility among the locals? Was he bringing the word of the party into the village, or was he bringing local interests and possibly heterodox beliefs into the party? In all of these cases, it was probably both. The traditional ritual contrasted with the construction of the bridge, which represented modernity and integration of the village with the outside world. The bridge was the link to the market that had been the driving force behind the reforms of the 1980s and 1990s. Even though the CCP has tried to penetrate society more thoroughly than its predecessors, the last 70 years since it has taken power have revealed the residual power of local cultures. In the southern province of Guangdong, traditional clan structures play an important role in economic and political life. In villages that I have visited in the province, large lineage halls have been restored or built anew, clearly forming the most important organizing point for political and socio-economic exchanges. This re-emergence of more overt traditional power structures has made implementation of party rule more difficult. In some villages, the party secretary and lineage head are one and the same. In Yantian village in South China, I discovered that every CCP secretary since 1949 had been a member of the same dominant lineage. This included the period of land reform, when some clan members were executed as landlords, the Great Leap Forward, GLF, of 1958 to 1960, when communal practices and living were pushed to an extreme, and the period since 1978, as the party has allowed economic reforms. Lineage dominance over local politics is traditional, not Leninist or even class-based. Yantian party secretaries in recent years have proven adept at retaining the full support of the higher-level party authorities, while protecting the interests of village members, and in so doing they have acquired considerable wealth for the village. Again, the question arises as to whether the CCP is controlling the local community through the lineage, or the lineage is using the party to protect and promote its own interests, or some combination of the two. These local identities are reinforced by religious practices and customs, Officially, China is an atheist country, but the CCP has had no choice but to tolerate religious practices as long as they do not challenge state power. The party has adopted a series of secular official celebrations that mark key dates in the history of the revolution or in communist traditions, such as National Day, October the 1st, and International Labor Day, May the 1st, but the most important festivals are derived from Chinese tradition, Chinese New Year, a week in January or February based on the lunar calendar, and Qing Ming, Grave Sweeping Day in early April, and local customs. Local religious worship and traditional practices have blossomed since the beginning of the Reform Era, but organized religion that stresses an allegiance beyond the CCP is viewed with suspicion and is usually repressed. Despite attempts to produce a more monolithic and obedient society, 
such as the re-education program for those of Islamic culture in the northwest province of Xinjiang, China remains a culturally and linguistically diverse nation.